Welcome to LegacyCast, your source for hearing from top influencers, industry experts, and successful business owners who are telling their unique story about life, values, goals, business strategies, and the various causes they are so passionate about. Future generations will come to be impacted by what is happening today, whether positive or negative, and our mission is to focus on what is going to affect change for the better. Hosted each weekday by James Snow, a former U.S. Army combat medic, now founder and principal advisor of James Advisors Group, a full-service financial planning firm in North Texas. This is Legacy Cast. Welcome, Legacy Cast listeners. This is your host, James Snow, coming to you from North Texas. And I have with me today uh, a guest that is here also in the North Texas area, Casey Lawrence. And uh, he's uh, the owner of one of the franchises for uh, J-Dog Junk Removal. And you know, that's a, a group that I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the, the vehicles, you know, the, the skins on them out there driving around and, you know, being, being fairly visible you know, and taking care of, you know, the, the obvious of, you know, just getting rid of people's excess stuff. Yeah, but making their their lives better, and you know, here at Legacy Cast, that's that's part of what we're very passionate about uh, talking on here, is you know what people are doing in their world that that makes their life you know better for for themselves and better for other people, but really uh, impacting change, and and so that's something that we're really big about here, and just you know discovering what what each other are doing, and uh, I'm I'm proud to say that you know my my brother here Casey is is also a prior military, and so. Yeah, a lot of the, the people that have come on the program here, you know, have, have been, you know, veterans. And so that, that's something that, again, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about doing is, you know, hearing from our, our, uh, our military people as far as what have they done, you know, you know, especially, you know, taking off the uniform and what have they done after service. So, you know, without further ado, let's uh, get Casey onto the program. Welcome, my friend. Hey, I appreciate you having me on. Um, it's a pretty cool thing here that I feel honored to be a part of. And we're honored to have you on here, man. You know, I've I had mentioned to you, you know, before we, we came on the program, you know, on when we were on the phone, you know, sometime back, that you know, I saw one of your vehicles, you know, driving around some some time ago. And you know, even back then I was like, you know, I, I need to talk to that guy. I need to I need to get to know him a little bit better and, and figure out, you know, what he's doing because you know, it's a, a really good good concept that, you know, but there with uh, with J Dog, you guys are are very pro military, you know, hiring people that, you know, taking out one uniform and put on another uniform. And, and so, you know, it's, it's making sure that we have that kind of, you know, that kind of quality and that kind of excellence, you know, within our businesses. Oh yeah. So, you know, that's like, that's a huge legacy that you're starting. And, you know, when, it, when I, when I mentioned it that way, you know, it's, it's because, you know, when you ask people, you know, what, what does legacy mean to them? You know, it's, it's going to mean, you know, you ask a hundred people, you get a hundred different answers. Right. You know, for some, some people it's, you know, uh, an educational legacy, you know, maybe if they're teachers or professors uh, or, you know, if someone is a writer, you know, they, they have books that are their legacy. Uh, and then with business people, you know, we, we create businesses that are part of our legacy and we want that business to last, you know, for many generations, hopefully, you know, hopefully we're not just building it just for one lifetime, but right. to, to impact and change lives for, for many generations after us. But when you hear the word legacy, uh, what Casey comes to your mind? Yeah, first off, you know, for me, I think legacy is it's a pretty universal word. Like you were saying, I think everybody looks at it differently. For me, I see legacy as what what can I do today that will impact lives now, tomorrow, and even when I'm gone, despite what I've done in the past and where I came from. Um, You know, I like you were saying, I was uh, I was in the military. I was in the army for six years, um, infantry out of Fort Lewis, Washington with the second ID, um, Tomahawks. And, uh, you know, one thing you hear all the time when you get out of the military is what you are set up to do with your military skills. The military, they make it a very um, strong point to say, come come join the military, learn some valuable skills that you carry over with you into the civilian sector. Uh, Unfortunately, there's not too many jobs open up for infantry guys in the civilian se- sector that don't require you to leave the country and, and do pretty much what you're doing. Um, right. But what they don't mention as much is the skills you do pick up are very, very important when it comes to any business. Leadership and following. I mean, heck, you got to learn how to follow before you lead. 
And that's one big thing in the military that they teach you how to follow properly and then how to lead. Um, right. And what we're trying to do here, honestly, it's just the same concept, just different, different scenarios. Uh, what uh, a typical junk removal business could be is not what it is today because now my biggest thing I like to say is to unlimit yourself. So I, I'm trying to break the limits of just a typical junk removal business. I want to say, you know, yeah, we, we do that as well, even though it may be a huge, big job that normally a junk removal business wouldn't do. But it's because I want to change the game. I don't want to just, you know, work within my limits. I want to reach out. I want to break those down and, and show everybody that with, with hard work, with, with some passion and focus and drive and a good support team, you can literally do whatever you, whatever you want to do in life. Sure, sure. And that's what I think my legacy is going to be. You know, I have a, I have a nine month old son now and I hope that, you know, someday in the future he can say, wow, look at my dad built. Um, I want to do that. And I want to follow in his footsteps. Yeah. And I hear that a lot from people that, you know, especially when they have children that they want their children to take over and, and that being part of their legacy. But then, you know, also some people, you know, maybe don't think about the fact of, you know, perhaps their, their kids don't necessarily want to follow in those footsteps. Have they, as a business owner also considered, you know, the strategies involved in, well, if my son doesn't take over, you know, who's going to take the reins. Right. And so, you know, that, that's kind of a critical thing, especially in my business, you know, with, with the finance side of things is, you know, just making sure that people do allow for that, you know, and make sure that, you know, they, they've kind of crossed all the, the, crossed all the T's and dotted all their I's to make sure that, you know, if their kids don't take over, then, then it's still okay because the business still will last. Absolutely. You know, and and a well-run business is the one you don't have to run yourself. You know, Um, (laughs) I look at it as, you know, if I leave tomorrow, who can cover down? And if I don't have anybody that can cover down, that's my own fault because I haven't trained and I haven't led properly. Um, whether my son takes over any business that I, that I run or, or build in the future, it, it's irrelevant to the actual business. It should be built and structured for anyone that I, you know, train or anyone that is trained to do that. Um, if, if he gets to the point where he's like, Hey dad, this is what I want to do. I want to go to college and I want to be in the stock market or I want to be a scientist. Then, I, I hope that at least he can at least get the leadership mentality from me. He can at least get mm-hmm. the drive from me that, that literally gets me through day to day where I wake up every morning. And the first thing I want to do is get to work, you know, because I want to, because it excites me. Because I'm passionate about it. That's what I would like for him to, you know, to get from this. Yeah. And, and he would in turn, you know, learn from your example of leadership that, you know, you've taken all the steps to, to ensure that you know the business is operational, even if you're not there at the helm, right? And, and then in turn, you know that he's going to be able to apply that to his own business uh, ex- expertise later on. That okay, I've learned this from my dad that he ran his business to where it was still functioning, even if he wasn't driving the bus, and and so I can do the same thing, and I can be very responsible with my business, and you know treat it as the blessing that a business is, because you know we're we're given these blessings. Uh, you know, I'm a person of faith, and so. I look at, at things very much uh, from a stewardship standpoint. Mm-hmm. And, and when I, when I see it that way is, you know, we're, we're stewards of our businesses for a short period of time and we're helping people and we're blessing people. We're given that responsibility to in turn then bless more people. Right. And the more that we do that, that it then becomes an additional part of our legacy to where, you know, the people that have worked for us and the people that maybe are our vendors that have come in contact with us, you know, they, they can't, they, they then learn, you know, what we have done and they, they can tell other people about us. And it kind of gives us that, that little glimpse of quote unquote immortality, if you will. Yeah, that yeah absolutely. We've helped make the world better, you know, through that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you're, when you're thinking about your legacy and just kind of that in general, uh, do you feel it's, it's important that people uh, really kind of put a, an active and deliberate thought into like from day to day, what they're doing that's going to impact their legacy? You know, I, I think I think people need to understand that your day to day is based on how you start it, and a lot of it has to do with uh, with with making an agenda, making a plan. And the funny thing is, you know, I'm a man of faith as well, and I like to say, you know, show God your plan, and you know, He'll think it's hilarious because, yeah, you can plan all you want, but there's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be detours ahead. Um, and a lot of people don't know how to adjust to those properly. So they kind of either freak out 
or they shut down or they're like, okay, well now what do I do? It is okay Mm -hmm. to take a step back and reset and say, okay, Mm -hmm. here's the information I have right now. And this is what I can work with. So now what's my plan? And it goes right back to the military transitioning out. You know, the biggest thing, the biggest thing for me is to show other veterans that it's okay to not know what you're doing when you get out of the military. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to call transitioning growing up again for at least my generation. Cause I joined it. I joined at 18 and I got out at 24. Well, that's your, that's your manhood. You know, when you're, when you're in that, those, those six years are so important and vital to the future that no matter what you're doing, it's going to lead you down a certain path. And a lot cool. of that's, they get out and they're thinking, okay, well, now what? What do I do now? You know, the the liaison told me this. You know, the uh, the case manager told me that. Well, for me, I didn't have college. You know, I, I didn't – I wanted to go, but I, I already accrued bills and other things, and I just had a different path. Sure. But I did have seven different careers in three years before JDOC, and they were – careers. They weren't just jobs. They were, I had to go out and get something like for once I had to get a CDL just so I can be a, a truck driver for a little bit, you know, and then I had to go, I got my EMT cause maybe I want to be a firefighter. Um, and I did all that. And what's funny is it all led to here and you're thinking, well, how do you get from infantry to truck driving, EMT oil field mm-hmm. to junk removal? Well, it's called opportunities. And a lot of us miss the opportunities or we recognize the opportunities and we let them pass because they're not for us. And I like to say every opportunity is unique. And if you don't take the opportunity, you're never going to get, um, so you're never going to get that feeling of, okay, am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing or what am I supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Um, if you would ask me three and a half years ago, what I thought I'd be doing today, it would have been a completely different answer than what I actually am doing today. But I took an opportunity. Um, it was a risk. It was a big risk. I mean, hey, come run a company that you know nothing about. Okay, cool. You know, and <laughs> next thing you know, it. Uh, I, I had to research everything. It was, you know, we started with my mom, myself, and my stepdad. And that was it. Just me in a truck and a trailer. And it, there was times where it was very difficult, especially because it's family. But also during that time, in order for me to take the opportunity, I had to leave everything I was doing and move across town. I was living an hour away. So I moved. I lived with my mom for eight months, right? That's insane. Are you kidding me? Oh, man, it was horrible. But the opportunity was, hey, look, I need you to come and do this, and this is how we're going to be successful. And this is what it takes for now to get to a a certain point, you know, where we're going to be. So I did that. Um, I sucked it up eight months of living with my mom. I, I took advantage of it. Hey, well, right. I can save money. Mm-hmm. I can get processes down. I can get certain systems that we can learn this together. Um, and then the leadership and the skills from the military kind of took over. Once I started getting, I already knew, okay, I got the gist of the business down. Now I need help. Now I need people to help me. So mm-hmm. how do I do this? Do I hire employees or do I hire leaders or do I hire guys that just need some extra cash? Well, I hired leaders. I, I paid a little bit more, but I invested a whole lot more in who I, I hired on um, because it's easy to get an employee. You can go anywhere and find an employee. There are a dime a dozen, sure. but it's sure. not easy to get a leader and say, I need you to be just as passionate about this business as I am, even though you're not an owner. It's very hard to do that, but they're out there. And if, and, and even if you hint a little bit, you can, you can work with it. And mm-hmm. one of my biggest, uh, uh, I guess, proud moments for, for one of my guys, I have a guy now, he's my number one guy. He never been in the military before. Um, he was a, an odd job guy. I mean, I asked him what he did for a living. He said everything, whatever, whatever can pay the bills and take care of my family. And that right there motivated me because I was like, okay, that's something I can, I can start on. I can work with that. I go, have you ever been in charge of anybody? He said, no, just me and my destiny. And I was like, done. I was like, we're good to go. Now, you know, he's, he's on salary. He's my number one guy. And he's the guy where if something happened to me, he takes over because I know he could, Uh, but it takes a lot of, of grinding. It takes a lot of searching and you got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you're truly invested in up front. 
then that way you can teach it because that's all a leader is really is a teacher a leader is, a, is an expert in what they're teaching and if they're not an expert in it then they don't stop learning they keep learning keep learning mm-hmm. and for a point yeah and that's what i want this legacy and, and like i mentioned my son earlier well the main thing for for even if even if i don't stay doing what i'm doing today even if years from now i'm doing something else or i'm running a couple other businesses or whatever the main goal is to show no matter what mos male female whatever you get out of the military i don't care if there's a book that says this is how you do things you don't have to do it that way you don't have to worry about well i don't have enough clout or i don't have enough degrees or because you know, James, I, when I got out of the military, I applied to every single abbreviated business, a, a government agency you can think of. And they all told me the exact same thing. You don't have a college degree. You're not suited. You're not suitable enough. And I, I was like, well, what do you mean? I, I, you know, I've been to war a few times. I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit. Well, they said, well, you, you know, the college shows the commitment factor, you know, and you just don't have that. So I looked at it and I was like, man, six years in the infantry and, you know, I signed up for four and I reenlisted to go to Afghanistan and well, all right, I guess that doesn't show them I'm committed enough. I don't understand. So I took, a, I took a hold of my own destiny and I went out there and just kept fighting and, you know, opportunities arose and I looked at them and I took them. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> and so it's, very, it's been very fun along the way too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. So when with your views on legacy and your plans um, for the future, how does that affect what you do in your business? Uh, now I mentioned that you know because you know with as far as you know planning and so forth, you know we we were kind of hinting on you know the the business plan aspect of things and you know, also you know maybe financial plans uh, being part of that that whole process. You know some some veterans feel like you know it's I can do this without putting any plans together, and then you know, I'm personally you know feel like it's is something that you do need to have those plans, even if it's not, you know, a rock solid roadmap, you at least have an idea of where you're headed. Yeah. So how, how do your views uh, kind of come in on that? Well, you know, um, one of my biggest uh, improvements that I, I need to do, need to improve on is organization. You know, I'll be the first to admit that I am not organized and my mom is completely organized. Right. Mm-hmm. So one thing she taught me, and what's funny is you think from coming from the military, I'm going to be, Oh, you're, you don't make your bed every morning. What are you talking about? You don't fold your clothes at 90 degrees. And well, no, cause I'm not in the military anymore, man. I mean, I don't iron my shirts anymore, but in a business, it is crucial to be organized and to have a plan. Um, one thing I like to tell people all the time is it's okay to go out some days and, and freestyle, especially if you're good at it. You know, if you can freestyle, that's fine. But overall, have a plan. And we came into this business with a business plan. Mm -hmm. We are a franchise, which means there's others out there. Well, we stuck to our business plan, and that has driven us to the success uh, that that we're actually um, in now. I mean, it's been three years. We went from a single truck and me to now I have six trucks about 15 guys, a warehouse, a yard, some equipment, but it's because we stuck to our plan, our original plan, and we can always add to the plan. And sometimes we can take away, but you got to start with a plan. Um, every month, you know, it's kind of funny because my family, my mom and my stepdad, they're not military. Uh, my brother's not military, but every month we have a monthly meeting. Every week we have an owner's meeting. And then every two weeks we have a team meeting with the team and stuff like that. And I I look at it as, Hey, look, this is our plan for the week. And I tell my two team leads, I need your weekly plan, weekly agenda. Um, And even, even with this business, a lot of the times, you know, our jobs, they're, they're very fluid. They come in daily, right? It's very seldom we're a week planned out because we, we just, we have a bunch of guys and crews, um, and if you ask me, hey, what are you doing next week? What are your jobs? I can tell you probably a few, but that's it. Now, if you ask me Monday, hey, how's Tuesday and Wednesday looking? I'm like, well, we're, we're stacked. Here's my jobs. Mm-hmm. And then you ask me Friday, hey, how'd your week go? I go, well, we, we blew it out of the water. We were completely just almost overwhelmed, but we got through it. Um, but it's important to have those plans to base your, your week and your days off 
off of because if you don't, then you're stuck with the, okay, well, well, what do I do now? I've already talked to these people. I don't really know how to go visit these people, but I don't really know what to do right now, you know? So if you have these plans in place, you at least have a starting, a starting point. Yeah. Um, and, and, that, and that goes for the year too. You got to have a yearly plan as well. And most of the time you'll surprise yourself. You know, we had our goals and we blew them out of the water. So we made more goals and new goals and harder goals and, and higher goals. Sure. You know, every time you, you reach a goal, you better make a new one. Don't get, don't get complacent, make a new goal, make a new plan. Um, one thing I like to do every night before I go to bed, I text my two team leads. I let them know what I'm going to be doing first thing in the morning. Now, sometimes, especially right now, cause they're kind of, uh, we have a new process we put together, but they'll ask me, Hey, what do you want us to focus on tomorrow? And what I tell them is I want you to plan out tomorrow. And then I want you to plan out the week tomorrow. I will discuss what I want you to do for the week. But as far as tomorrow goes, I want you to plan tomorrow. And if I have an issue with it, of course I'll step in. But if you don't plan it, then you're not going to know if you're doing something right or wrong because you're just going with flow. Mm -hmm. And in this business and any business, you can't succeed without failing, you know? It's true. So if you don't plan, you'll, you'll learn real, real quick. I got a plan because you're going to fail in certain areas and you're like, yeah, I got to put a plan together. Yeah. And one way, one way that I kind of look at that is, you know, with, with the plan, you know, though it can still still needs to have some flexibility. It, it's kind of like, you know, you know where your center point is. And so you can, you can adjust, you know, it's, it's like, you know, reciting in your scopes, you know, you can, you can recite and, and adjust and, and overcome the different things that pop up, but at least you have a point to come back to. And so that's, that's really where, where it's so important to have that plan is yeah. not just that, you know, what the next step is because, you know, it is very important to take away that uncertainty because then you're able to go forward with a lot of confidence and be able to crush it when you get there. But, but it's also important just to know, you know, like I say, what, what that next step is so that you can be looking at the step beyond that. Absolutely. And, and it's okay if you don't have the next step yet. Um, there's been many times that I'll go into it and I'm like, okay, well I got tomorrow and, and, and the next day planned, but man, I really just don't, for some reason I'm having a space. I don't know what to do the rest of the week. Uh, that's okay. Let's just get to the first step first, you know, and, and sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll find that that first step extends a little bit longer than planned. So you're like, okay, well this action is going to go into the next day. So that automatically extends your next step. Right. So sometimes it's fine to have, you know, a, a simple, you know, limited plan, but ultimately you need to have um, a plan for everything you do, even if it's open-ended, because you, if you don't start somewhere that's organized, that's, that's actually planned out, then you, you could honestly find yourself just sitting around, you know? Yeah, doing busy work. Exactly, doing busy work. And I tell my guys all the time, I go, there's always work to be done, but it's up to you to make sure it's either productive or not. And if it's not productive, then we don't need to be doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard, especially when you're paying guys hourly and they need hours. And at the same time, you're like, well... I, I want to help them at the same time. And, and and what you do is you look at stuff. Okay. Well, what's worth it? You know, what's going to make it worth bringing these guys in for an extra three hours today. They can get their hours and I can actually get some stuff done that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and then that goes back to the basics, you know, just if you look at your plan, well, this is what I need to have done. Well, what can someone else do? Right. What can one of my guys do for me um, that you make sure I get something done. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Stay productive. So as a, as a CEO and entrepreneur, uh, are there maybe a couple things that, that still kind of keep you up at night with the business and the running of it? Or do you, you pretty much feel like you're sort of on autopilot at this point? Um, every single thing keeps me up at night. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to improve my fighting position, right? So mm -hmm. I look at different things, um, even operationally. Sometimes I, I find myself too involved with operations, especially mm -hmm. now. Uh, last year I, we all, we kind of had an owner's meeting and my main goal was for 2019, I was going to not be as involved with operations as I used to be. Um, and for me, it's, <clears throat> it's definitely difficult, especially at first because I mean, I built it right. So it's like, man, I gotta let this thing go to someone else and I'm not sure how it's going to end. 
But what I have found is that goes back to training and teaching the right personnel. Um, what keeps me up at night, honestly, is how can I beat myself, right? My competition is who I look at every time I look in the mirror, it, except the, 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 day, the day before. So I look in the mirror, I say, okay, yesterday's you is your biggest competition. How can I do better than I did yesterday? And my answer has always have, I mean, it always has to be that. It has to be better. If I say, well, I did okay, it means I didn't do my job well, you know? If I go out tomorrow and I say, man, we only, we only had six jobs for the whole day, but I picked up three contracts that start next month, that's a good day because I'm not worried about the actual day. I'm worried about the long term. So if I look at yesterday, well, what did I do yesterday? Well, the yesterday's me. We had 10 jobs, which is decent, but I didn't really talk to anybody. I kind of just spaced out. Well, that's not, that's not good. Um, I don't worry about other people's business, other people's other franchises, because we have franchises all around us that are J-Dog, which is great. I don't worry about what they're doing because it doesn't directly involve me, and it also doesn't directly affect me. Um, I, we got to where we are now because of how we conducted our plan, how we executed it. And, yeah, as an entrepreneur, as any business owner you know, at all, if you aren't going nights where you can't sleep or your mind's racing, it means you ain't in it because – I'm always trying to think of new ways and, and, and to better ourselves, better our system, better our processes. And sometimes, yeah, it'll be one in the morning and I'm like, whoa, I got to go to bed. But, you know, that's natural and I, and I love it. I do. It gets me up every morning. Excellent. So what do you think uh, some of the common reasons are that entrepreneurs are either failing or giving up when they try to start a business? Um, well, I think there's a few different reasons. Um, I will tell you this right now. I, I think there's a few different kinds of business people. Um, two in particular that I've seen is you have a businessman and then you have an entrepreneur. Um, an entrepreneur will go through the grind. They'll go through the mud. They'll get dirty. They'll get hurt. They'll get unmotivated. They'll get stressed, depressed, and then they'll get motivated and they'll be on the highest high ever. And then they'll actually make mistakes and then they'll learn from their mistakes. And then you have other businessmen, I know, I mean, there's no one in particular, but you have this type of businessman that throws money at every issue, right? So let's say I start a business and I have all this capital. I'm like, all right, well, that franchise or that business over there, they did this wrong. So instead of me doing that wrong, I'm going to throw money at it. I'm going to make sure I start out with all this equipment and all this resources, all these assets. Well, that's awesome. But what's one thing you didn't do? You didn't create that business yet. Um, and for us, it literally took my own manpower, my mom's manpower, and my stepdad's manpower to create ongoing business, right? I had to make sure that our area knew who we were and at all times that, hey, those are military people. Those are awesome. Um, I start off with one truck, one truck and trailer and just me. And the first month, I'll be honest, the first month, it was horrible revenue-wise, horrible but that second month, we went. We, we doubled the first month. The third month, triple. You know, it just kept getting better because of what we put in the first month. Now, if I would have gone full force and just thrown a bunch of money at it, then I would have had a bunch of bills that I wasn't paying because I didn't have the business for it. And I see that a lot. A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of, um, <clears throat> well, a lot of people out there, they, they just go about the wrong way. They think, okay, well, I have all this money. Why not just throw it at the business? Well, how about you, you take what you need? put towards the business and then whatever you make, put it back in the business. You know, you don't have to have that lavish sports car, that awesome truck. You don't need to make a hundred grand your first year of salary. Are you kidding me? If you're making, if you say, <laughs> so a, a, a buddy of mine, he owns a couple of businesses and he, we were talking one day, this was like months ago. And I asked him, uh, I asked him something. He goes, Hey, sorry, man, I'm broke. And, and I made the comment, what are you talking about? You're broke, man. You're a business owner. He goes, yeah, I'm a business owner, man. I'm broke. And I was like, <laughs> He's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, I'm broke too. I mean, yeah, I get by and I, I pay my bills, of course. But in this uh, time in the business, if I'm, you know, sporting around a brand new car and just throwing money away because I'm taking out, you know, a good lump of it. Well, my business isn't growing as much as it could be. You know, my guys aren't, aren't going to be getting paid as much as they could be. And that's one thing I look at is entrepreneurs need to pay and treat their team members or employees, mm -hmm. what their actual worth is. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if you can say, hey, well, this guy isn't worth that much, then he shouldn't even be working, honestly. Right. Because I want to be able to look at one of my guys and say, man, you're worth a million dollars. I just can't afford you right now. You know? If I can say that, then that means I'm on the right track. Because one day, my goal is going to be, hey, I'm going to be, if I can get to that point where I can pay you a million bucks, then hell yeah. But a lot of these guys, they want to, hey, I'm going to do bare minimum. I'm going to pay bare minimum and get the job done. Well, that's not how you do it. That's not at least how I found it. I pay a little bit more. I've been criticized from the beginning. Other franchises have criticized how we do business. But other franchises have also bailed out, sold, closed down, or sold to an investor. Now they're not even an owner anymore. Now they're just a high, you know, highly paid employee. And that's mm-hmm. fine if that's your prerogative. But, you, you know, we did it the way we felt was right. And now I feel very comfortable any of my guys asking them to do anything for me because I haven't only done it myself, but they've seen me invest into what they're doing, you know? And as an entrepreneur, if you're not doing that, you're not investing your time and not not just money, but your time most of all into your business, into your guys, then you're not going to go very far. Um, With different businesses, it's probably different because of the, the structure, you know, not as many employees or team guys, whatever. But that's the, 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 the crucial point is, you know, when you're starting a business or when you're, when you're first taking that leap of faith, you, you got to get ready for the bipolar to kick in because one day you're going to love it. One day you're going to hate it. You're going to question yourself. You're going to question your process. You're going to question everything. And then you're also going to be, you know, oh, I wouldn't trade this for the world. I'll never be an employee again. And then one day you're like, man, I could definitely take this job over here. It'd be so easy, you know, and, but you got to stick it. You got to stick with it. You know, um, I've been offered a couple of jobs. Hell, I got an email two about two months ago for a contracting job in Afghanistan, right? Making six figures, doing a couple rotations in a year. You know, I'm thinking, hell yeah, that's awesome. But that's not my prerogative anymore. I'm not there anymore. That's, that's just not me. You know, that was the four years ago, Casey, who just got out of the army and, and wanted to, you know, go, go be a cool guy. Heck yeah. But now I have, a big, huge family that every single day I make sure they're taken care of. And if, and if they're not, then I'm going to do everything I can to make sure they are, you know? Yeah, you, you made some, some really good points there. Uh, particularly, you know, when you talk about investing in the employees <clears throat> is that you know, as a, as a good business leader and business owner, you know, having people that are worth investing in is, is very paramount because you, you want those people that, you know, number one, you, you really can't afford them, but you show them the loyalty to, that you care about what they are aspiring to and you care about what they're wanting to invest in mm-hmm. and you care about their success to where then they in turn, you know, are, are going to be loyal to you because you've invested in them. Absolutely. And that, that even, you know, for, for many businesses can, can reach over into the area of, you know, maybe you're, you're adding additional benefits or you know, things of that sort to where you're, you're buying into their, their future success. And, yeah, and they're yeah. just they'll stick with you for that. Absolutely. And you know, what's funny is, uh, investing doesn't always have to be monetary, right? Um, I have an 18 year old, uh, team member and, and dude's amazing. He's been with us for eight months. He actually, his first day with us was his birthday. He's 18 years old and he gets, he's always the first one at work, right? He'll get there at five 30 and he's supposed to be there at seven. He'll get there an hour early every day. And one day I was talking to him and I asked him, uh, and my stepdad asked him as well. He's like, Hey, why do you wake up sore? Like, why do you get there? I like your, that you're early, but why are you that early every single day? And his response, now he's 18 years old, by the way, uh, never served military. Um, you know, I think he just finished high school. I mean, but he's 18 years old. And he said, well, I read an article one time that it said successful leaders wake up early every day. So I wanted to make sure that I was doing something right. Now, I'm not saying he does anything with his time in the morning. I mean, he probably just, you know, sits and watches YouTube, which is fine. But he made that first step, right? He wakes up early every day. Now, now going forward, no matter what, he will be there on time. And he's also the hardest working guy I have. Probably one of the top three, but he's probably up there. But um, he he's 18, and he always asks me questions relating to business marketing why is it important to do this now if you put him on a tractor or or an excavator he can he can do it he can learn it and do it he's very mechanically inclined like myself and my other guys but 
for him, he's reaching and saying, Hey, you know, well, this is what I want to do later on in life. I want to have my own body shop, my own auto body shop. And I tell him, I'm like, okay, well, well, why? And he tells me, he just loves working on vehicles. He likes fixing things up. And I said, okay. So he takes everything he's learning with us, even though it's not even related to auto mechanics, he takes it and he's trying to apply it to what he wants to do in the future. And he's honest with me. So I'm honest with him. And I tell him all the time, if you got any questions at all, ask me. I, I will be more than happy to help you get to where you want to be in life, even if it's not with me. If it's not with my company, I just want you to, I want to see him successful, right? And taking 15 minutes out of my day to talk to him, or, or answer questions, that's the same as giving him a 10 cent raise. You know, it, it's, it's the principle. It's not, Hey, you know, well, I want more money. A lot of times people that ask for more money, they're bad at spending money. You know, I mean, that's just the truth of it. I see it all the time. They come to me and say, Hey, uh, you know, I was looking for a raise and I'm like, well, I started you off $3 an hour more than what you're making. Well, I know, but I mean, it's been a few months and I, you know, I really need the money. I'm like, okay, well stop right there. What do you spend your money on? And then that, that tells you what you need to know, you know, but with him, I mean, he is always trying to learn and it's because he, he's hungry for knowledge. And when you find someone like that, you have to go all in. You have to, when you find someone who wants to learn as much as they can and wants to actually be successful, especially at 18 years old, when I was 18, I didn't know what I want to do. So I joined the infantry and I thought, let's go blow some stuff up, you know, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but when I saw that and I saw his, his, uh, his hungry, his hunger for knowledge, I pounced on it, man. I was all right. So what do you need from me? You know, what do you want to learn? Let's do this together because I want to see now this year, I've already tried testing him out and he's been doing great so far, but I want to see how he can lead because you know, why not? So I throw him different curveballs every now and then, or I'll tell my team leads, Hey, put him in charge of this. And like, well, are you sure? And I go, yeah, I'm sure. Don't, I mean, just, you got to at least let him see what happens in those situations and see how he reacts. Um, and I find that that's when you're investing in your guys like that, you, you can't go wrong because once you, let's say you fall, they're going to be there to help you get up. They're going to help you pick, you know, take it right back up. Yeah. And that, that investment is going to end up paying you dividends. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah. So, you know, it's even though we're, we're not being, you know, greedy minded, you know, we're, we're investing in other people are being selfless, <clears throat> but that in turn is going to pay us back. So, you know, it's, it's good business sense. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing is, okay. So for instance, look at Chick-fil-A. Okay. Look what they've done with the fast food industry. They've created a standard that is so high that it, it's, it's hard to compete with. Right. Well, it's because they invest in their employees. They invest in their team members. You know, you go in there and you, every single one of them, they smile. Hey, you know, my pleasure. How can I help you? Um, there's a, they have grants for their employees. Hey, I can help you with college. I know we're fast food, but guess what? We want to give back as much as we can. Well, that pays dividends right there. Look at how, look at their success. It's insane. And they're, they're only open half the time other fast food restaurants. So if you look at, look at that model and you try to implement it the best you can in what you're doing and treat your employees, your employees or treat your team members how you'd want to be treated as their position, then you're, you're on the right track. Yep. Spot on. So what are some of the specific roadblocks and, and in turn resources that you've, um, that you would advise a new entrepreneur to be mindful of, you know, roadblocks that you've run into and then resources you've been able to tap into to help you along the way. You know, I, I would tell you this right now, my first year, I think we spent way too much money on marketing and advertising because we didn't know. Right. And when you don't know something, you try to do the easy thing and pay for it um, yeah. or buy it. And the first year going in, we spent a lot of money on, and we didn't get any returns um, on a lot of our investments for mm -hmm. marketing. Uh, we did a billboard for a month because that's all we could afford. Didn't get anything on it, which is fine. Right. Um, a lot of different magazines and, you know, we, we bought into them. I mean, Hey, why not? Right. They have a good sales pitch. We're just now starting. They say they can help us. Uh, and then we learned real quick that that's not what it took. It doesn't take all the time money. It takes time. It takes hard work. It takes uh, repetition. 
and consistency. So the biggest roadblock for us at first was that, you know, and fortunately we planned very, very well. And the areas we did, they were very uh, futuristic areas as in growth was just happening and nonstop. So we looked at it and went, all right, cool. Well, this plan is not only going to be good next year. It's going to be good in 10 years, you know? So that's what we kind of looked at. Okay. Well, where do I want to be in 10 years? Where do we want J-Dog to be in 10 years? And that's, that's how we, that's kind of, I mean, for the most part, that's how we looked at things. Now this year, my biggest, uh, my, my goal for me, I, I set myself was I want to close at least one big contract, right? Like a big one in my mind, big is, you know, six figures or more contract. Yeah. And that's, that was my goal for this year. My biggest obstacle last year was myself. I was too operational, operationally involved. I wasn't allowing my team leads to actually do their jobs, to, to learn the hard way, to learn through this and that, because I was too involved. I was like, oh, wait, well, I would see the schedule before I leave to go home, and I'd, and I'd be like, oh, wait, 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 why do you have these guys together? Why do you have these guys doing this? And I would change it. Now, yeah, the jobs got done right, and everything was great, except – the team leads weren't getting where they needed to go when they needed to be there because I was in their way, you know? So that's one thing I told myself this year I wouldn't do this year. I would, and not to be like a jerk to them, but I'd say, Hey, look, the only way for you to do this right is to learn. And the only way to learn is to do it. So it's, I mean, it sounds confusing, but it's true. So this year I told myself to back off out of their way a little bit, let them kind of run the show because the business is there, Right. The structure is there. The systems are in place. My job now is to create more business. My job now is to get those contracts. My job is to make sure that this company sees 2030, you know, sees 2040. That's my job now. And I can't keep involving myself in operations or scheduling because if I do that, then I'm not doing my job, right? So that's, I would say that's, that was my biggest obstacle was, you know, learning when to, when to actually step up and, and promote myself, right. And instead of trying to run everything myself and, and not utilizing my assets. Were there, were there certain uh, resources like a small business administration or different groups like that, that you were able to tap into when you're starting out? You know, I, I, there was a couple, there was, um, on, you know, nothing against anybody else. We just, we didn't really do that too much. We didn't rely on mm -hmm. others. We kind of, like I said, we had our, we had our plan and we kind of wanted to sure. stick to it and just kind of see it through. Mm -hmm. But I will say 2018, my, the most beneficial thing I ever did was go to this event in Orlando, the MIC conference. Right. Um, it was phenomenal. I met a lot of great people, a lot of great contacts. I was inspired by a lot of different entrepreneurs um, and the coolest thing is they were, you know, I mean, 99% military vets, you know, and I was like, wow. Okay, cool. So they, I can relate, they can relate. Um, and even to this day, I, I speak to a lot of them still on the phone, Facebook, um, collaborating. And it's a pretty cool gig. And I, and I, I always tell people, you know, I get sometimes things cost money, but sometimes it's worth it. It's the, the return is so worth it. Um, that's why we went to that, that conference. It was a four day thing and it cost a good chunk of change, but that's why I had great people in place to take over while I was gone, you know, and I learned a lot and now I'm like, wow, I, I was thinking so small minded before and how, you know, my brain is just expanded with just ideas and okay, well, man, I can do this now and I can do that now. I can use these guys here. I don't have to to buy this. I don't have to make, you know, worry about this as much as I do this. And, um, that's what I would have to say. It's just, that was just a, a, an amazing event. Honestly, that really propelled me into what I want to do this year. Yeah. And so in turn, you know, investing in yourself has, has been able to benefit your business. <clears throat> right. Yeah. I mean, there was no lavish vacations. I didn't go to the Bahamas, you know, that same amount of money that we spent to go there, my stepdad and I, we probably could have spent to go somewhere, right. Or to buy a new truck or, or whatever. We could have put a down payment on a truck or something, but instead we said, all right, well, how can we get the most out of, uh, out of this? And, and 
and we did it. And now we're going this year. So excellent. Great. Yeah. How do your personal values and your belief systems uh, play a role in your business? You, know, you mentioned, you know, you also being a person of faith. Is that mm-hmm. something that you incorporate into uh, your business model and then how you, how you interact with your employees? And in turn, would you recommend other people uh, do the same thing with their business? Absolutely. You get what you give. That's what I, 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 uh, I believe in strongly. And, you know, um, my pastor is, he's an amazing guy. His name's Craig Groeschel. Great dude. Um, and he actually has his own podcast where he does business, business to business, right? He, he even leaves religion out of it, but everybody knows he's a pastor. Um, and a lot of times when it, it, it's great going into these sermons because, you know, for instance, uh, two weeks ago, he started a new series called Habits. And I was just motivated by no other because I was like, yes, I have bad habits. I mean, I want to know what his take is on habits. And sure enough, blew my mind. So I took those and I implemented it to my guys at work. Now, I don't know what their religious preference are at work, right? Mm-hmm. Nor do I need to know. But what I do tell them is I take the strategic basis of what he put out on those Sunday mornings and I implement it saying, hey, you know what? We all have bad habits, right? Like, for, for instance, my bad habit that I really want to kick, I've been doing it for 16 years. I dip tobacco. Okay. Well, what he said was, you know, our habits are a collection of small decisions over time. And it's insane, but it's true, you know, because not one of those little habits is going to make you who you are or break you. But after time collectively is it, it it forms into that bad or good habit. So, um, my stepbrother, you know, amazing guy. He, uh, he had a huge life altering experience and now he's a very, very um, inspirational character. I mean, he is. I look at it, I'm like, man, two and a half years ago, you were nowhere near this guy. You did a 180 and then some. Um, but he's a very big man of God. And, and, you know, he teaches me a lot without knowing it, just by what he says, how he, how he says things. You know, and, and he needs to work more on how to manage people, right? But then I look at it and I give him, I give him more leniency because – He's older than me, but he just now figured out how to manage himself, which so I'm like, okay. So he's, he's starting fresher than I did. So now he needs to learn how to, how to manage other people. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with, with, with how we do things. It, it really does. You know, um, church, church is like having a mentor. If you have a pastor you believe in and you follow your respect, it's like having a mentor, you know, and, and if church isn't your thing, seek out a mentor. I, I highly recommend it. Um, seek out a few mentors. Have them for different things. You don't need one one say all. You know, have a financial mentor, a spiritual mentor, a business mentor, operation mentor, um, and you'll be so surprised how much it benefits your day to day. So, there's something uh, maybe earlier uh, in your lifetime that that you look at now and you think, well, maybe I should have done that a little different. You know, mm-hmm. had I had to do it over again. Do you think, do you think about things like that? I used to, I used to. And then, and then I thought again, and I was like, every single thing I've done in my life has led me to where I am now. Right. Right. Um, and like I said, when I got out of the military, so just a little quick summary, I got out of the military and went straight for the Hills. I just started running. I wanted a big high paying job. So I got my CDO and I went to the oil field. I was a contractor making bank. I mean, I was bringing home about 1100 bucks a night and it was nice, but I had no life, no family. The person I was with, we didn't last very long because of just, we were miserable. Um, I went down to South Texas, did the same thing on there, making a bunch of money. I was lonely, didn't know anybody, ended up in jail over a bad night. You know, I was just mixed with anger and hate and guilt and confusion and alcohol and it landed me in jail. But what really did it was the next day, you know, my dad came and bailed me out six hours away. Didn't even ask him to. And I was like, you didn't have to do this. And he's like, no, I did because you don't belong here. And I'm like, okay. He goes, you're smarter than this. You're just giving yourself pity. You're just getting down on yourself. And he was rough, man. He was infantry for 22 years. So I expected that, but he woke me up and he was like, you don't belong here. You belong somewhere. 
where you can actually use your talents. And at the time, I didn't know what my talents were. I didn't think I was talented at all. You know, so of course I was regretting, oh, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did that. And then about a month or two later, I get laid off from the oil field again. And I was living in an apartment that was paid for. So now I was homeless and didn't have a job. So I'm like, well, what do I do now? So I used it to my advantage. I said, okay, now I'm going to start over from scratch because I got no excuse not to now. So I moved back up to Dallas and I started thinking, what do I want to do? What do I really want to do? And let's, let's just see if I can do it. Um, and it took me a couple of different career paths, but it led me to the opportunity that I said yes to. And that was j Um, it led me to my beautiful son, my beautiful wife, you know, and that's one thing that there's not one thing in the world I would take back and do it over because that means they would probably wouldn't be here. And this business wouldn't be here and the connections and, and, and the, and the great people that I've met over the time, I wouldn't have never met them because I could have just went somewhere else, you know? Mm-hmm. That's true. A powerful story, man. <clears throat> so when you're transitioning out of the military, you know, I know that, you know, a lot of people, when they transition, you know, had their transition stories and the hurdles that they went through, you know, going away from the, the camaraderie and the brotherhood that we, that we had in the service. What kind of hurdles did you have to overcome? Man, you know, a lot of it was uh, thinking I could do everything myself, not accepting help, not seeking help. I'm too mainly, I'm too big. I don't need it. Um, I'm infantry, man. I could do whatever, you know, I could do anything. And man, it's so relative because everybody I've talked to, they think the same way, you know, and it's, it's funny because all the, all the infantry guys that, you know, I saw all my brothers, I talked to them and man, they're, yeah, yeah, I agree. Or I did agree, you know, and, my biggest hurdle was getting over that um, and connecting with my family and civilians here that maybe didn't ever have a military pass or the, the military personnel that never served active duty or maybe they didn't ever been to war. Right. There's a lot of, a lot of them out there. Um, but I distanced myself from veterans. I didn't go to the VFW. I didn't join veteran friendly clubs or whatever, you know, on Facebook. I didn't care if you're a vet. I didn't care if you served. I didn't care if you went to Iraq, India, Syria. I didn't care because I was like, whatever, man, I'm going to do my own thing now. Well, it led me down a path that I lost everything and it was just no good. And now I have found and collectively created a brotherhood that I have never seen outside the military. You know, my guys, they're not all military. It's mixed, you know, and they will hang out hours, hours after work just to BS, just to hang out. Now, I've never had a job where after I was off, I stayed and hung out ever besides the military. Usually I'm like, OK, peace out. I'll see you later. I don't care what you're doing. I'm going home. But here, what we've created, um, they, they want to hang out. They want to stay a little bit. They're not so hurried to, or not so rushed to, to just leave work and go home. Um, and that's when I realized, man, it's, it's important to have brothers, man. It doesn't have to be, oh, you know, oh, you didn't go to Iraq or Afghanistan, then you don't know. It doesn't have to be that. It just has to have a little bit of like-mindedness. But most of all, you create that, that relationship with these uh, men and women and, and ask for help if you need it. I mean, I didn't ask for help and, and you know, it landed me in a lot of situations I don't want to be in. And it took my hero to actually wake me up. And my hero is my dad because he, I mean, basically raised me by himself, single father. Um, but we were, we were poor, poor living in the ghetto of Garland, Texas back in the day. And, and when I see who he is now and, and how he raised me, I'm thinking to myself, man, how did I get so lost? Right. It's because I didn't, it's because I, I, I failed my brothers. I let them go. I let them get far away from me and I didn't reach out to them when I should have because you don't have to have all the answers, but if you have questions, you need to ask them, you know, and right now there's not a brother out there that they call me right now and say, Hey, I need you. I need you life or death right now that I wouldn't answer the call and say, yeah, all right, I'll be there as soon as I can, you know? So that's what I would say to any vets out there that are getting out. I wouldn't even call it transitioning anymore. I call it growing up again. If you find yourself in a, in, in a hard spot because you don't know how to grow up again, that's okay. Just reach out, ask a question. 
don't be too prideful. Believe me, there's no room for it. No. Yeah. <clears throat> so what would you say is your, your greatest character strength that you discovered? Um, I, I think, I think drive, you know, I, I would say that's one of my biggest is drive and passion. Um, it took me 25 years to find out what I'm passionate about, you know, or actually I'm 30 now. So it took me 27 and a half, my bad. So yeah, 27 and a half. It took about six months into this business for me to realize what I truly love doing. And that's building this camaraderie that I've, that I've helped build, building this business that I've helped build. Um, but if I would have gave up at any other time, it would have never led me here, but I was driven. I, my biggest, even before J dog, I was a grown man, but my biggest question always was what do I really want to do? You know, when I grow up, right. I never knew the answer to that. I had too many things I wanted to do. Um, but I never gave up. I kept driving on and I kept trying to find out what I really wanted to do. And now today, you know, my drive is what gets me through, um, the hard days, the hard weeks, you know, when, when we have our slow season, which is usually about three weeks long, um, which is great, but still it's rough. And, and I have to drive on. I have to make sure these guys are confident enough in my decisions. They stick around, but they don't give up at the first sign of trouble, you know? So I have to see, Hey, how can I motivate these guys? Even though they may not be working 40 hours a week, how do I, how do I motivate them to show up tomorrow or show up when I need them? Um, and it's just, it's my drive, you know? And on the flip side of that, would you say that there's a particular character weakness that you discovered? Absolutely. Um, I'm very, very hard on myself and very stubborn. I, I have that mentality still. I haven't perfected it yet, but it goes back to asking for help. <clears throat> but I have that mentality still where I want to figure things out myself to the point where it's almost, you know, too bad. Like you need to stop because I see these successful people and I'm like, man, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. Right. So I, I got to do it. I have to do it. When sometimes I need to just reach out and say, Hey, how do I do this? <laughs> you know, how can I get you? Because no one has all the answers. And if you think about it and you think you do, you're going to fail and you're just going to be insane. You know? <laughs> yeah. I can relate with that too. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist, but also slightly a control freak uh, at the same time. So yeah, I, I want to have my fingers in everything and you know, it's not always a good mix. <clears throat> so uh, if, if you're to maybe uh, describe um, something about you that, you know, most people don't know uh, about Casey Lawrence, what would you say that is? Hmm. Honestly, I care a lot about a lot of people, like by everybody. Um, a lot of people don't see it cause you know, you know, especially at work, I'm very straightforward business and, uh, I still have that infantry mentality, but man, I care more about everybody than people think because I hate seeing people that don't get that 37th second chance that I've had. I've had so many second chances in life with everything, not just business, not just work, no careers, uh, relationships, you know, everything. And I'm like, man, it, I hate to see people that have been given up on to the point where they're almost un you know, non-existent. They're just a, 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 a sideshow. They're just a detail of the background. You know, I hate that. Um, the homeless, you know, I get it. Half the homeless, it's their choice, whatever. But a lot of it's because of the support they didn't have to finally drive them to the point where they're like, all right, fine. Yeah. I'd rather just do this. Because they didn't have anybody there. They didn't have anything to go off of. They didn't have any help. Um, I, I'm trying to hire a homeless guy right now, and he's great, but he doesn't have a car. So I'm like, okay, well, how can we work? How can we work this out? So we're figuring things out, right? I don't want to give it to him. I don't want to say, hey, I'm going to give you a car, I or hey, I'll pay for your ride every single time. No, because he doesn't learn that way, and he respects that, you know? But I wish I could help everybody. I really do. But my main goal is not to go out and change the world. My, my main goal is just to inspire one person. If I can inspire one person and that guy can do the same thing to someone else, then the ripple effect is insane. So, right. you know. <clears throat> no, well put. Well, Casey, yeah, that's, that's all I have for you uh, for the program. But, yeah, I appreciate you carving out time for your, from your schedule to, to be here with us and, you know, let us get to know you a lot, a lot better. And, just, you know, what, what drives the person that that's driving your business and you know, I appreciate that. 
Yeah, like and so that, people, I appreciate you having me on. Well, sure. And so people can get a hold of you. You know, that's that's important because you know we'll, we want people to be able to take advantage of what you're doing and to for you to be able to help them. So how would they reach out to you? Well, I can, um, I have a you know you can give myself a number or email whatever you think's best. Um, my email is I can say my email if you like. What is your preference? Yeah, I mean my email it, it's it's my first name it's Casey so C A S E Y dot L A W and the number eighty eight at gmail dot com and then I can can dish out my cell phone number via email. <laughs> I get enough okay. calls. <laughs> some, some people probably run across you on Facebook also so. Casey Bubba Lawrence. That's my uh, that's my name on Facebook. Casey Bubba Lawrence. Oh, well, Casey, I appreciate you taking time out, and you know, like I w- want to say to all of my good buddies, I'll see you around the bend, my friend. I appreciate it, sir. You have a great one, James. You too. You've been listening to Legacy Cast. Thank you for joining us today, and be sure to come back next time as we speak with more top influencers, industry experts, and business owners from around the world.